darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound of silence. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Getting Real with the Fictitious Dishes. Apologies, I can't get my voice as high as Art Garfunkel does. I had to. Um, you still have your balls. <laughs> I had to mess with the tuning of that a bit, but. Uh, All right, we're yeah. Just... We are uh, changing things up along with the rest of the world this, this episode, uh, live from quarantine. Live. We, uh, my name is Liz. I play guitar in the fictitious dishes. I'm joined by. Jackie, so, I don't know who, see, the problem is that we can't, yeah, for, for oh, me, if we're yeah. going clockwise on the Zoom, it's me, then Taryn, but I think it's different on everyone's oh. screen. So let's go with our bass player, our lovely bass player, Jackie. Help say hello. <laughs> I'm Jackie, I play the bass for the Fictitious Dishes, and I'm not sure who goes next. I'll go. <laughs> I'm Maggie. Yes. Back Usually, the first I time in a lot of right. episodes. <laughs> Sometimes I play drums, but sometimes I play ukulele. She's a woman of many talents. Maggie's back with us, which is very exciting. You're welcome. Um, and uh, last but not least, I'm Taryn. Oh, she played my own for you. I play guitar and I sing in the Fictitious mm -hmm. Dishes. Yes. Uh, this podcast is where a band gives you advice. We usually dispense advice that we find on the internet or if we're lucky enough that uh our listeners write in to the fictitious dishes at gmail.com and ask us questions um this week to mix things up a bit we're also going to give you a little bit of a live talent show we're all going to play a little song for you guys uh some of us as maggie pointed out are changing instruments uh maggie and jackie are both playing things that are unusual for them uh <laughs> Taryn and I I'm impressed. Wow. And yeah. Taryn and I are playing acoustic versions of the things we always play. <laughs> Taryn's is only Taryn's just playing a hollow body electric. It's not even <laughs> Hey Liz. What am I gonna do with um, refuge? <laughs> it's very hard. It's very hard. I know. <laughs> All right. Well uh, sh shall I though? Yes. Yeah. So okay. let's let's do that. Let's kick it off. We're gonna kick it off with a song, and that uh, Taryn is gonna play for us. Taryn, do you want to introduce it at all? What? No. <laughs> I'll introduce it afterward, because maybe that will impress you. All right, here we go. <laughs> You are a splendid butterfly It is your wings that make you beautiful And I could make you fly away But I could never make you stay You said you were in love with me Both of us know that that's impossible And I could make you rue the day but I could never make you stay Not for all the tea in China Not if I could sing like a bird Not for all North Carolina Not for all my little words Not if I could write for you The sweetest song you ever heard It doesn't matter what I do not for all my little words. Now that you've made me want to die, you tell me that you're a more friend of gold, and I could make you pay and pay, but I could never make you stay. 
Not for all to see in China. Not if I could sing like a bird. Not for all North Carolina. Not for all my little words. Not if I could write for you. The sweetest song you ever heard. It doesn't matter what I do. Not for all my little words. Uh, some of you might know that song as All My Little Works by the Magnetic Fields off of 69 Love Songs. Disc one? Disc. <laughs> Showing my age. Beautiful. Thanks. Dare I say to 69 Love Songs, nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So according to our programming list that we've pre-agreed to before recording this. Uh, I believe we have Maggie up next. All right, I'm just getting set up here. <laughs> On the uka ukulele. Did I get the accent right? Ukulele. Yohali. Okay, this is uh, Take On Me by Aha. <clears throat> We're talking away. I don't know what I'm to say, I'll say it in any way. Today's another day to find you trying away. I'll be calling for your love, okay? Take on me. comes from Reddit. Liz left out the uh, person's name, so we don't know. Sorry, but I swear we all. This is a request for advice from Reddit, and the title is, My roommate is my landlord, and he's overstepping boundaries. Advice to prevent conflict. In brackets, edited for length. <laughs> I edited it. It was really long. Oh. <laughs> Hello. So, situation. Me and my husband rent two rooms in a house. Landlord has a room in the back. Rent is not crazy expensive. Our lease is month to month, even though verbally he said one year, which I know doesn't mean shit. Just setting the tone for this man. Okay, so problem. This guy, when we did the lease, said he'd take care of the yard work and hire a maid once in a while because the house is too big to clean. Now, a year later, he has us living here like his caretakers. Man does not buy groceries and eats from ours. Does not clean often besides placing dishes in the dishwater. Dishwasher. 
the yard is a mess of overgrowth and bugs. We clean and I get really irritated when he comes to tell me I missed a spot or to make sure I got something over here or tells me that the stove needs cleaning too or something. When I mop, he strolls in with dirty sandals leaving dirt tracks, thinks nothing of it. To top it out, he's using my collectible Disney mugs to drink coffee or whatever like dude need to get his head sorted out between what is normal behavior because he's practically a stranger to us. Should we move out? Ask me anything if you need more details. Update. I came home and he took all my collectible mugs and hung them on his coffee mug rack he bought. I came home to find he rummaged through my plates cabinet and hung them up at his coffee station. This is above creepy. Like, WTF does he think this is? I'm not his family. Like, what can I do for him to stop forcing a relationship on us? Move out? I would say move out. Just a crazy yeah. idea? Well, Jackie, we had a question for you right. because Jackie here is a landlady. I am. How landlady. much of your roommate's stuff have you hung up in your <laughs> coffee area? Does she have collectible Disney mugs? <laughs> that's a sensitive topic. She, she does not, but I did drink some of her cider the other day. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> but I replaced it the next day. With what, though? Comparable cider? cider. Did you pour water into the rest of her cider? More like cider. a teenager. I got it more cider. I gave her more cider. Anyway. The same kind of cider? I asked, yes, the exact same. You thing. asked permission. That's different. I asked permission first. I said, can I have one of your ciders? And she said, yeah. And I drank four. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> so I told her that I was going to replace it. And I did. Anyways. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's weird. You know, if... I don't go into my roommate's cabinets or in her room or any of that. That's her stuff. You know, the, the things that we share are like things that are like dishes. Yes, dishes. But maybe she should tell her, uh, this person, this landlord, that those are collectibles and I don't want anybody eating off of them. I mean, communication might help. She sounds like she's avoiding confrontation at all. She wants this guy to act normal without her having to say she anything. She doesn't know about what he thinks is normal and what she thinks is normal. She thinks she's thinking, oh, these are collectibles, and he's thinking they're just dishes. Right? I think it sounds like she's hoping that there's maybe some kind of like legal protections. Yeah. I mean, no. which yeah, I mean, is there any kind of like legal guidance though? Like if you're the owner and you live with like, like, could you, could you like go into your roommate's room for any reason? Is there any law against that? Well, I don't really know. Cause I'm kind of a new landlady. So I don't know this. All I just know that like I told both of my roommates that I've had that I'm not going in your room for any reason unless there's an emergency, you know, yeah. I'm not you gonna smell do smoke and they're not in there. <laughs> Yeah. I, I lived with the landlord once, yeah. and he would it's go into my in. room to vacuum, which really pissed me off because I'm yeah. also a, sounds like, like this lady where I have boundary expectations. Um, and you gotta lay out the boundaries first. Yeah, and, and it was a sort of thing where he was like, he said what you said, Jackie, he was like, I won't go in your room, but he thought it was fine for him to go in and vacuum. I was like, no. Nope, I don't if go you in there. Were, if you get, well, it's new carpet, so I'm worried. I was like, if you're worried, you can ask me to vacuum or, you know, like, under no circumstances should you be going in there. And I was, like, a student. I had – all I did was learn at the time. Like, I – there was nothing – I wasn't doing anything weird. Like, so – Unlike now I, where you do weird shit constantly. Huh? Oh, yeah. So I'm like, now where you do weird time. shit constantly. Yeah, but that's because I only have me coming in to vacuum up my shit. So that, that's, that's a different story. Uh, but in my experience, renters have, like, absolutely no rights. So, like, that's well, kind of out the window. Well, but they do have rights. They do have rights. Like, have rights. At the roommates is I'm, different, though. Yeah, roommate, roommate renters is totally different, I think. Roommate renters have a difference because you live together. And so you can discriminate to a certain extent like if I had a place that I was renting out when I wasn't living there I couldn't say oh I want a girl to live there or I want a guy to live there I couldn't say that yeah but mm -hmm. because I am living here I can say I can discriminate in some ways mm -hmm. 
know. And so in hmm. her post, did she say that her collectible dishes, which is, I feel like is another issue that we should talk about, um, <laughs> were they in the common area? Because also <laughs> kind of ro roommate law is like, anything that's in the common area is common. Right. So I like, was thinking that if she doesn't want him using like certain dishes and stuff, like she shouldn't have them in the kitchen. They shouldn't be out. Yeah. yeah. Cause if a dish is in the kitchen, it's like it's a anyone dish. can use yeah. it. I guess unless she like expressly told him not to, but it doesn't sound like she did. No. It seems yeah. like she just expected him to know that a Disney mug was not to be drunk out of and Yeah. A yeah. mug in the cupboard is a mug in the cupboard when you want your cup of coffee, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think she needs to, she needs to talk to him. She needs to be like, hey, we had an agreement that you were going to do X, Y, Z, and you haven't done any of it. Yeah, especially the yard. And, and by the way, yeah. Yeah. lay off the fucking Disney mugs. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, don't put your lips on my Disney mug. And then if he's like, <laughs> don't no, I didn't them. say that, or like, yeah, sure, I'll start doing it, and he doesn't, then you just got to move out. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, hate to say that because it's good to be brave and like meet confrontation. But like, if a guy's being weird and you're living with him and you don't have to, just move. Like, it yeah. save you a lot of trouble. Like, moving sucks. It's true. But, and like, where's her husband in all this? Is her and the husband like double? Yeah, they can like two that's against a, one, right? That's a good point. Yeah, or like you know. I, I get, like, some women are a little, you know, maybe this guy's kind of creepy, I don't know, but, like, yeah, like, have her husband talk to him, you know? Yeah. Or, like, dude. But maybe yeah. the husband is well, also your point. on the side of, like, dude, who gives a shit? They're just coffee mugs. Yeah, I know. Or, like you said, though, the two of them could get together and kind of give each other moral support and yeah. be, right. like, hey, yeah. mow, mow the lawn. You said you were Yeah, but she doesn't anywhere in here say, like, how he, how her husband feels about any of it, which makes me think that, like, he doesn't have an opinion about any of it. Yeah, Maybe it's just her. I mean, it's her Disney mugs, not his. Well, true that. That's not what the good state of California has to say about that. <laughs> we don't know, we don't know where they are. We don't know where they are. Maybe wherever they are, Disney mugs are have a separate byline in the marriage. Club. They have a prenup. <laughs> they have yeah. a prenup for the Disney collectibles. <laughs> yeah, I hate like, to say I think it. She but said, I just she's saying that him like hanging. She's saying that him, like, hanging all his, her mugs on his coffee rack is, like, beyond creepy. Like, he might think he's being welcoming. Like, look, yeah. I made us a little coffee station, you know? I don't know. It could also be, like, oh, maybe he's trying to take ownership of her coffee mugs. Like, suddenly Our play. he's displaying them in his corner of the coffee area. I don't know. You know, who knows? All I know I think, is that when I was a roommate, if I didn't want somebody touching my shit, it just never saw the light of day, or it like it lived in my room. And those were those are roommate rules, right? Like, mm -hmm. if yeah. your roommate didn't want you drinking her cider, she'd keep that shit in her bedroom. No. If you had like a handle of vodka brand vodka in your early twenties and you didn't want your shitty roommates drinking it, you didn't leave it in yeah, the kitchen. You kept it in your closet. <laughs> I kept it in my closet. It's a hundred percent. I'm remembering the bottle of Jack Daniels in my closet. Yes, that is exactly yeah. what you would do. That's where it lives. So I don't know. Maybe she needs to have a little bit of a backbone moment and talk yeah. to the guy, or have the. She and the husband need to lay it down. Or like, unless yeah. these things happen, we're moving out. And if the guy doesn't yeah. fall in line, then move out. Simple. And also, yeah, except that that's just kind of like roommate roommate protocol. You don't want your yeah. shit touched, throw it away. Like a squirrel. Advice dispensed. <laughs> You're welcome. Question. Oh no, next we have uh, the lovely Jacqueline, the most elegant landlady I have ever laid eyes on. Look at that robe. God dang, I'm really, I was thinking about that robe today. I got this, my, my uncle got this for me from either Japan or China. I'm not quite sure. Very nice. The you know, Far East. That contrasting lining. The Orient. <laughs> it's like That's this, not PC. I not stopped PC. myself from saying that. <laughs> I didn't. I am wearing my uh, Big Lebowski sweater, so we can talk <laughs> about Chinaman. Yeah. <laughs> the non-preferred nomenclature. Asian Americans, please. <laughs> All right, sorry. 
So am I singing? Am I doing a song? Yes, please. Yep. Yeah, take us away, Jackie. Can you hear me? Can you hear the guitar? Yeah. All right. What am I doing again? All right. I'm going to do a song that Grace Slick sings. Enjoying just purely the audio version of this, they really missed out on some great interpretive dancing going on. I kept messing up that stupid C chord. Oh, it sounded that great. Good. Sounded that is great. Never apologize. Gotcha. I was transported to the hate Ashbury. That was my portion of the talent. Talent portion. My portion. Talent. Jackie, who's that behind you? Uh, this is Henry. Henry! Henry's a dog, everyone listening at home, but not seeing. Yeah, are we going to put our this uh, Zoom visual on YouTube? Is oh, that you something know we're we are. Try to do? do it. Okay. Oh, yeah. So those That's of why you we all got done up in our beautiful makeup tonight. We, um, all I put on was lipstick. I haven't worn makeup in three weeks, and I did not tonight. <laughs> well, it doesn't show, Liz, radiant as ever. I'm wearing my faux fur, though. Ooh la la, it's faux. Yeah. It's chilly in my garage. Oh. There's Fur. chili in your garage? Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. All right, so oh, up next we have the talented, endlessly talented Elizabeth. Singing yes. Singing a song brand new to all of us. <laughs> do we get the uh, pleasure of the Scottish introduction? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just just for Taryn because I forgot her birthday this year. Yay! I will introduce this Scottish. Um, a la yeah. Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Sorry guys, I didn't learn a new song except for the very beginning of the Sound of Silence, which you heard at the top of this episode. But so you're gonna hear a good old-fashioned dishes song. Yeah! Uh, we love the dishes! Saves you editing one in later. Yep. <laughs> Uh, this song is called Union Pacific, and it's by the Fictitious Dishes. <laughs> <laughs> There was no war, there was a chasm, an aching void in the center, fill it up, connect the soul with steel and speed and gold. 
faster, make go faster, faster, make go faster. Over land and the continent, my memories that twister ride faster, make it go faster. Five hundred tons of pure momentum. What is the business of this mountain? Blow it up. It fails to see from sea to shining sea. And Mr. Stanford will not help us. There are no saints here to preserve us. I am glad we'll end in a land so go full steam ahead. Faster, make it go faster, faster, make it go faster. Over land and the continent, the five memories that you lose your ride. Faster, make it go faster. Meow, meow, meow. Don't talk with this four years to come. That day in Promontory with the last hammer so on. Promontory! And I, we were still in class. They thought when you in that Pacific, we'd be done. There's nothing left to be afraid of. Winston's shrugging, switchers humming. The place we're always running. Faster, make it go faster, faster, make it go faster. Over land and the continent, by memories such as the running faster, make it go faster. Yay! Thank you. <clears throat> the song's not really acoustic ready, but, uh, <laughs> sounded great. It sounds great. Awesome. We always joked about doing our like unplugged version of our album. This is our chance. I know. We could do like storytellers for each song. Soft jazz <laughs> versions. Oh boy. Uh, all right. Well, that was great. Thanks Liz. Thanks Jackie. Thank you. Uh, we've got one more request question for our happy, happy listeners. Maggie? All right. This comes from Reddit from user IDK whatever. <laughs> how can I actually show my cat how much I love her? Oh. Um, <laughs> like and that's actually. it. That's the whole question. That's the whole question. That's the question. Dear listeners, if you have any suggestions, <laughs> feel free to write in. Post them on the Facebook or the Instagram, maybe even with a demonstrable video for us to watch of how to express love to your cat, then we can share it with Hashtag IDK. see a cat, show a cat. See a cat, show I just got somebody, somebody did a see a sip, take a sip thing to me today. Mm -hmm. I've never done a story on Instagram, but I did it today. Oh, congrats. Thanks. It was all for you, VOD villain. Um, so do you guys have any advice for this person though? I must admit I am allergic to cats. I've not spent a ton of time around them. So I don't really know how you're supposed to show them that you love them. I, I feel, I think the stereotype is that cats are notoriously fickle and a little hard to show your feelings to, but, um, no. Maggie. Unwarranted, <laughs> completely unwarranted. I probably yeah. am the most experienced cat person of the group. Maybe Jackie. That's not true. I've had lots of cats growing up. Yeah, but have you had any as an adult? No, but I did come over and pet your grandpa once or twice. Grandpa. Oh, grandpa. R.I.P. Uh, well, I, I think one of the biggest ways that most cat lovers will recognize is that if the cat is sleeping on you and you have to pee or get up for some reason, you just don't. You just <laughs> don't disturb yeah. them because that you love them so much. You don't want to mess up their rest. You don't want to give up the snuggle time. I feel like this lady, this person, excuse me, is asking for a direct way. That's more like a passive way to show your love. I'm taking lots of attention, you know, lots of pets and snuggles and feed them 
wet cat food, stinky wet cat food that they love. They do love that. They love the stinky wet cat food and make sure <clears throat> the litter box is clean if they have a litter box. Otherwise, they'll tell you when, by shitting on your bed or something like that. That happened to me. Did you guys ever see the uh, um, show on Animal Planet with Jackson Galaxy? Uh -uh. He's the cat whisperer. Yes, I did see that show. It was great. If you haven't, you need to Google Jackson Galaxy. Quite a character. I think I need that cat whisperer because my cat has been... What happened to Jackie's audio? Yeah, Jackie, you sound quite quiet. I'm like... Quite quiet. Can you hear me? Project more. We can hear you. You're just a little hard to hear. You really can't hear me? Barely. We can hear you. You're just faint. I'm faint. I don't know how to... Let me see if I could fix it. <laughs> anyway. Glasses first. Jackson Galaxy um, did teach the trick about the slow eye blink. Like, you get down on their level with them. And then if the cat gives you the slow eye blink, then like you give them the slow eye blink back. And that's like a way of being that's like, what the yeah. First, that's what the first responder on Reddit recommended, right? Yeah. Is that like and a then trust that's thing? What, like you don't need to be on your guard with each other? Like you're it's not just their body language. language, yeah. I'm checking my mark. Their love language. Check, check. No, we can't hear you. We could hear you before. Really? I asked you guys if it was okay. Now you sound okay. I think you just need to sit closer. All right. <laughs> I don't want to sit this close. All right, here. I'll move the whole table. So, yeah, I think um, <laughs> the slow blink is, like, the most scientific thing. But other than that, yeah, the the cuddles, snuggles, well, oh, well cared cared for showing you all eating their needs you know what i will say just a little psa that um when your cats are around seven you got to get their teeth cleaned and mm -hmm. it's expensive because they have to be put under to do it but it will prolong their lives and their health quite substantially so it's worth it and that is one way to show your cat you love them, even though they won't enjoy it, but they'll probably enjoy being alive and healthy longer. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten my cat's teeth cleaned. I've had a million <laughs> cats. I've had one cat that lived to be 16. Wow. Uh, and I had another cat lived to be 14. I think 16 is the oldest, though. And I never cleaned her teeth. <laughs> but I, I am with you on the, on the nap situation, Maggie. That was one thing my sister and I, when we'd come home from high school, because you remember you'd get out of school early, 210. Awesome. Come home. We had two cats, two sisters. Each <laughs> of us gets a cat. We take a nap after school. It was great. I, I live in the life. I didn't get off the sofa till my dad came home. <laughs> I used to, like my cat, I used to, my last cat that I ever had was part. Siamese and he loved to spoon and he loved to talk and he was just the best cat ever and yet kind of an asshole cat at the same time because cats are, can be assholes yeah but he was he was more like a dog than a cat he was really cool I had a, a part Siamese cat one of the these post high school nap time cats and he would fetch you could crinkle up a paper ball and he was like what is that you throw it down the hall He'd get it and go, wow, come back, and then bring it back. He'd play fetch with the cat. Yeah, I, think I swear I'm kind of like dog cats. Your, your what? Your dog cats? Siamese are like dog cats. They're cat dogs. Dog yeah, cats. they're very vocal too, huh? Yeah, tell me about it. So in short, it sounds like we well, don't have go. a real answer for this lady. No, and I don't think she even, I think she just asked this question it's a dumb question. <laughs> it seems really important. Honestly, though, I feel like Michelle oh, from La Saboteur could have written that question because she so loves her cat and, like, legit would, she like, what her cat would, like, probably die for her cat. So I, I feel like she could have written that. Honestly, it was just the structure of the question. Sorry, Jackie, go ahead. The person that wrote it is... It's kind of like they know what the cat needs. They know what the cat needs. They know what the cat wants. 
They just want to ask a question. I don't really know. <laughs> the structure she of a depression. She's got a tolerance tonight. She doesn't want to put up with anybody's love bullshit. I'm not here for it. Usually on those, on those message boards, though, people will write, like, a thing like that. Like, how do I show my cat that I love him? And then you click it open, and there's, like, five paragraphs of exclama- explanation. That, there was no explanation. It was just that. It was just, how do I show my cat how much I love her? <laughs> and it just, uh, but yeah. Is there any like, advice to be open. had on that tiger show that everybody's losing their shit about mm-hmm. on Netflix? Probably. Jesus. That thing is out of control. I have seen the entire thing. It's my husband's watching it in the other room right now. It's bonkers. No, I'll fill you in later. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll just watch it, and then we can have a whole podcast about it where we review shit we're wasting time on. I mean, yeah. It's it's worth watching if you enjoy, like, being up on culture and you want to know what everyone is talking about for two months. Um, in no. terms of, like, parts of it... it I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts on it. Probably too many for this podcast. But also, if you're a big time save it for the lover, podcast, Liz. <laughs> yeah, I'll save. I'll save it, well, I'll save save it for, it for the next podcast. podcast, Liz. Yeah. It's like hard to tell if they're kind of like making fun of some of the people, but then some of the people deserve to be made fun of. But then there's some people who I legit feel very badly for in it, and yeah, there's like. No, what I won't say there's no good people among the, like the three main people it focuses on, like they're all awful. Uh, <laughs> and there are there like like some animals are I, not not necessarily animal abuse, but there are some animals living in conditions they should not be living in, which is a bummer. So and I and I much more of a bummer. Like some people I know have a really hard time watching that kind of stuff. So yeah, be warned about that. <laughs> on that note. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special edition of Getting Real with the Fictitious Dishes. Um, We thought we would change it up a bit for these changing times. We hope you enjoyed it. If you would like advice related to the pandemic or not, as you can see here, we're kind of trying to keep it light, uh, keep everyone's mind off of things, you know, but write to us at thefictitiousdishes at gmail.com. If Check you us out. have a talent that you would like to share on the fictitious yeah. talent show, we can zoom you in. If you show your wiener or other genitalia, you will not be invited back. No way. I thought you were saying we will zoom you in if you show your wiener. Period. No. That's a caution. <laughs> it will not. I was going to YouTube. The shit isn't live. But if you have, if you can do like magic or draw some stuff, it doesn't have to be like music, dance. Right? Yeah, you could do a little dance. You could show us how to chop a carrot. I don't know. People have skills. Chop a carrot? What? I was chopping carrots earlier tonight, and I was thinking there must be an easier way. I have that feeling about cutting cantaloupe. Like, there's got to be a real way to do it. (laughs) So, if you are out there, gentle listener, and know an easy way to chop a cantaloupe, Maggie is desperate for your input. People need to know. She's, I mean, this is the first time she's brought it up, you guys. She's always talking about her cantaloupe issues. Goddamn cantaloupe. I don't even buy it. It's too hard to cut. See? <laughs> it's not Poor bad. Thing. Can't even like enjoy this, this beautiful orange mango. Because mango. it's mango with the worst. mysteries within. All right. Um, yeah, so. End this thing. End it. <laughs> Yeah, follow us on social media. Um, you can always listen to our music on streaming services. We're on most of the main ones. Um, give us five stars. Give us five stars. Write, review, subscribe. Five stars. Five stars only, please, for getting real with the fictitious dishes. Don't bother. Just five stars or nothing. With that, um, <laughs> stay safe out there. Listen to the government, which I know is not a very punk rock thing to say, but in this case, they're trying to keep you safe. <laughs> only like certain portions of the government. Well, yeah. The ones that are telling you to the try to stay inside, and, stay inside and wash your hands. Uh, Listen to scientists. Yes, thank you. Is what I was trying to say. Uh, with that, have a good one. Bye. Buenas noches.